Hey guys, Roy here with Apotheca Marketing. Today we're gonna to continue to explore Google Analytics 4, GA4, because you're forced to use it now, right? Because the deadline was July 1st. Now I know, people are still getting data in Universal Analytics, I'm not sure why, but Google hasn't fully pulled the trigger for everybody. But don't get used to it because it could go away any day. So it's time to get used to GA4. Today we're gonna to take a look specifically at some of the things you can do in GA4 that are kind of an improvement on some of the stuff that you could do in Universal Analytics. And one of those is audiences and how to set those up. So we're gonna to to take a look at a couple different ways to set up audiences, one that I prefer, um, but both will work. Okay, so what is an audience? Audiences are basically setting up a segment of your traffic to your site based on rules and triggers about how they interact with your site. And so you're defining those rules, you're defining the demographics, the type of people that you want to have in that audience. Why is an audience important? Well, there's a number of ways that you can use your audience. You can use an audience for um, just measuring in your reporting. So you can actually set up, for instance, a certain type of audience that will trigger an event on in GA4 so that you can include that in your reporting. Um, an audience is also something that you can remarket to, and that's one of the most common ways to use an audience is, or at least with our clients is what we see them using it the most, is setting up a specific audience of people that have come to the site that you want to market to. And a lot of times that's abandoned cart people, it's somebody who may have looked at certain types of products, and it gives you an opportunity to remarket to them, to understand the audience and um, import that, for instance, into Google Ads, link those the GA4 audience with your Google ads, and then you can give them specific types of promotions, ads, that type of thing. Um, particularly, like I said, useful for people that have visited your site, added stuff to the cart, or looked at a product, or a certain product category, and you wanna market to those people specifically. So let's take a look at audiences and how we can set them up. The first way that you can do it is to go to your admin, and you can see there's audiences here. Okay, now you can create a new audience. And there are a number of ways to do this. You can create a custom audience. You can use one of Google's handy dandy templates. Okay, so there's the general ones, non-purchasers, super, super useful. Uh, seven day inactive users, you can add that. You can go in and then change these. So for instance, if I was to select the uh, non-purchasers, so this excludes the people who've made a purchase from the site. Now let's say that you wanna get more specific and you wanna add a different type of group that has done something else. So in this case, we wanna look at somebody who's looked at, for instance, a, um, a product page on your site. So on our example site here, we have the URL. We know that if we, if we want to do a collections page, like a general page, we can make sure that the URL contained collection. But the taxonomy for Shopify is that product pages are in a products subcategory. So in here we could say, for instance, that the URL contains product. Okay. Now, this will show you the people in this segment um, for the current days. If you wanna set this to a maximum number, then you can set that there. It doesn't always update right here, right away. Um, but then if I wanted to save this, I could give it a different name, non-purchasers with paid product view. Okay, and I could save that. And then that would end up in here. Um, now the problem is, is like you saw, you don't know how many people necessarily are always in that audience. It doesn't always update. And the other big problem with this interface through the admin is that it doesn't allow you to edit it. So for instance, I had set this one up for an example um, previously. Now, if I go into it, oop, that gives me the data. So you can see that it's less than 10 users. I can go into it. If I go to edit it, it will not let me edit any of these criteria. The only thing I can edit is the name and the description. So that's really, really not useful. Um, so you cannot create or edit this. What you have to do 
is duplicate it. And then once you duplicate it, you can then edit the criteria in there. Now, like I mentioned earlier, um, one of the useful things that you can do is actually use these to create an event. So if you have something, for instance, that you, uh, a path that somebody takes on the site or they do certain things, one of the things you can do is go in and make the audience trigger, which is essentially creating a new event. Now I will caution you, there is a limit to the number of events that you can create. So if you have a whole bunch of people in here doing, um, a bunch of stuff with audiences and they're creating a whole bunch of new, uh, event triggers that could be problematic. You will run out of them soon. So doesn't give you a lot of information in here. Once you've also, the other thing is, is once you've created an event and used a name, so we use the 25 plus year old women in the U S if I deleted this, if I were to archive this and create a new event or a new audience, it does not allow me to use that name again because that name is still in the database. So you have to tweak it and create a new name, which is kind of annoying. Um, and like I said, while you go through all this, it, um, doesn't, you don't really know if it's going to work or not. So one of the things that we like to do is rather than this, we will create, create an explore. We'll create a blank explore. And this is where you can set up your segment. Their segment is your audience essentially. So you can see it's a relatively similar setup here. Uh, one of the things we didn't go through is the, the other templates here. You can see that there's uh, preset ones that have preset definitions, super useful. You can use the preset, not make any changes. That's cool. Or you can use the preset and then make different adjustments to it. So like I mentioned before, this is a very common one that's super useful is people that have added products to the cart. You can see there is an audience associated with this um, and they have not made a purchase. Again, we can get rid of the app purchase. Um, we could refine this and actually make it actual uh, other things like maybe it's demographics. So we want um, a specific age range, gender or market interests. Maybe we want somebody that came from a specific channel, right? So, uh, from attribution, we could actually do the medium or source that they came from, even a broad default channel. And we could say like organic, right? Something like that. Um, so what's nice with this is that, um, we'll get rid of that. We see the audience size, we can tweak it. We can play with the different parameters. Then to build the audience, all we have to do is check that. And then it's exactly the same as the admin. We can create how many number of days that, um, defines that membership. So if we want it to be just people within the last 30 days that have hit these criteria, or if we set the, to the maximum, I think it's like 540 or something like that. It's a very long period of time. So whatever works for your business, um, and how you want to define this user group. Um, and then again, you can create an event if you wanted to. And then once you have that audience clicked, you can save and apply, and then that will appear in that audience list in your admin. And so once you have these parameters in here, um, you can, you know, experiment with what's going to actually show an audience. So maybe you're getting too refined. So for instance, maybe I have add to cart and I add another condition that is, um, say something from attribution and the medium contains CPC. This site isn't doing any CPC, but if you didn't know that you would find out quickly here by seeing the audience size. So you can actually come in and say, okay, well, that one's not going to work. I'm not going to add that as an audience because like we showed before, if you go to try to edit it in the audience, um, admin section, you can't edit it. So this is your opportunity to experiment with it, to edit it and to add information. Now, another thing that is interesting with this is that you can create a report in here. So if you have previous, previous reports, um, that you've worked on, this one's blank. 
um, what you can do is say, hey, I want to look at specific data. So from mobile traffic, I can create a segment here. So say, you know, this is just an example. It's not a great example, but, um, you know, I want just mobile traffic to the site. I can right click on this and create a segment. And so it's the same interaction. So if you have a specific report, for instance, say you did something with paid search and you were just identifying new users who hadn't purchased from paid search, um, or that they had looked at a specific landing page or category page on the site. Um, then you could identify that you get the results in your explore, and then you can create that specific grouping here just by, by looking at your reports. So you don't even have to go through the whole segment builder. If you have a specific group of data selected that you want to target. Um, and so that's a quick and easy way to do it as well. Again, you can just right click on that build an audience and then there's 863 people. Uh, for instance, in this one, um, you can rename it, whatever you want to name it. You can put a description. The description is super helpful. If you have lots of different people in your analytics tools and you want to let them know what this is about. So sometimes the names can be a little cryptic. Um, you can even put who created it in there and just so they can quickly see who did it. Um, and is using that audience. So now that you have that audience, you can build reports on it. You can also, like I said, go through and identify certain targets that you want to hit with your marketing programs. So that's one little quick, uh, tip for creating audiences in the GA four. Um, again, super useful, especially if you're doing paid search display advertising, that sort sort of thing. Um, you can really start to refine your audiences. We're going to have more tips and tricks and uh, how to's about GA4 now that everybody is forced to use it. Um, so if there's anything that you'd like to see, let us know in the comments, email us, uh, we'll be doing more of these videos. So, and it would be super helpful if you could give us a like and subscribe to the channel and we'll be seeing you soon. Thanks.